Well, hi, and welcome once again to our Bible study here at Bible Talk. Here being, once again, in Saddleworthing, England, as we continue on in our study of the Sermon on the Mount. And believe it or not, this is our 27th week, our 27th session, chapter, call it what you will, uh, which means that we've spent just over a half a year so far in this study, and it's just been blessed for, for over, all of that time, because it is worthy of all of our time spent in it. Amen. This wonderful teaching of Jesus Christ to His apostles, to His disciples. Um, so we're, as, we, as we continue on, and I do want to remind you, by the way, that all the previous studies in the Sermon on the Mount are available online here on BibleTalk.com. So you can go back and review those. You can invite others to come along and watch. Um, it's, it's good stuff because it's the Word of God. So. Amen. And before we start, let me just ask the Lord's blessing. Father, we do. We, just, we do ask your blessing upon this time in your Word. And we trust, Father, in the presence of your Son, Christ Jesus, because we are indeed gathered in His name. We trust, Father, in the presence of your Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us into all truth as you have promised. Because, Lord, we don't want to lean on our own understanding, but we want understanding from you. Father, that's what we not only want, that's not only what we desire, but it's what we desperately need, is for you to open your word, that you would open, as Paul prayed, open the eyes of our hearts so we might see wonderful things in your word. So, Father, we just praise you, we bless your holy name, and we give you all the honor and glory in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, as I mentioned last week, I think that the study today is incredibly important. And it is incredibly relevant to the times that we live in, as you'll see. Uh, so, so do be prepared to take notes. And again, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, you can always write to us at office at BibleTalk.com. We're, we're, we're picking up in our study in Matthew chapter 7. Remember, the Sermon on the Mount is Matthew 5, 6, and 7. In Matthew 7, and we're starting where we left off, we're starting at verse 21. Matthew 7, 21. Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Not everyone. Not everyone. I need to start this with a little prologue, okay? Mm -hmm. I want to start by reading you uh, from Mac, reading to you from Matthew chapter 13, that, mm -hmm. which is kind of a chapter of parables that Jesus told. Okay. The parable of the, the sower and the seed, all right? Yes. I'm going to start in verse 24. Matthew 13, 24. Jesus presented another parable to them, his disciples, saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. But when the wheat sprouted and bore grain, then the tares became evident also. The slaves of the landowner came, landowner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, for while you are gathering up the tares, you may uproot the wheat with them. Allow both to grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First, gather up the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them up, but gather the wheat into my barn. Well, just to give you an explanation of that, I'll not give you an explanation of that. The word though. Yeah, because the disciples said to him, well, what exactly does this mean? Mm -hmm. So in verse 37, he continues, and he said, the one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, and the field is the world, and as for the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom, and the tares are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. So just as the tares are gathered up and burned with fires, so shall it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send forth His angels, and they will gather out of His kingdom all stumbling blocks and those who commit lawlessness, 
and will throw them into the furnaces of fire. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, you'll see the relevance of this as we go through this study of uh, verse 21. He said, people will come to him on that day saying, Lord, Lord. Okay? Mm -hmm. yes. But have not made him Lord. Yeah. Now, let me give you an alert. Let me sound an alarm. It's possible for people, you might want to write this down, it's possible mm -hmm. for people to lie. No. Mm -hmm. Now, a lie is a statement on the lips that does not agree with a statement, the truth, living in a heart. heart. That's, right. mm -hmm. yeah. That's what a lie is. Now, eventually, I promise you, the heart will expose itself, as it always does. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, I mean, you'll, you'll hear the truth come forth. But a lie is, is something that disagrees with the heart. But people are obviously, I mean... They're obviously able to do this. I mean, that, that's a fact, as you well know. Anybody that's lived uh, more than a, probably a week and a half knows that to be the case. And remember now, he, he's saying the, the wheat and the tares in that parable, that the tares, they're generated. Their father is the devil. Just like he said in John chapter 8 when he was talking to the religious people in the temple. And he you said to them, he said, you are of your father the devil. Mm -hmm. who is a liar by nature and the father of lies. Mm -hmm. And you know what? People give birth according to their own kind. Mm -hmm. yeah. I say elephants give birth to elephants. Mm -hmm. Giraffes give birth to giraffes. Liars give birth That's to liars. liars. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. In Isaiah 29, 13, the Lord said, Because his people draw near to me with their words and honor me with their lip service, but they remove their hearts far from me, and their reverence for me consists of tradition learned by rote. So he's saying it's possible. I mean, this is the, the prophet Isaiah, mm -hmm. 750 years before the birth of Christ. And he's saying people draw near to him with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. Again, it's a matter of the lips disagreeing with the heart. Yeah. It's a lie. Tears among the wheat? Sounds like it to me. It does. Okay? Because what we are, the children of God, are the people who proclaim Him to be Lord. Right? Now think of this. This is Paul writing to Timothy. 2 Timothy 3, 12, 13. And again, do me a favor. Test the things I say in the Word. Don't take my word for it. Go back. Take your time during the week. Meditate on what you've heard. Think about what you've heard. Test it against the Word of God and, and see if it's the truth. Because you have to hear it from God right. for it to become something that impacts and affects and changes your life. Right? Right. Yeah. But Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Oh, the blessed promises of God. Okay. But evil men and impostors will proceed from bad to worse. Listen to this now. Deceiving and being deceived. So there are people, they're lying... They are deceiving, they're attempting to deceive in any event, because they have been deceived. Do you get that? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're both. They're deceiving, but they've been deceived. Now, this is really, really important to understand. Because they're from the deceiver. Well, one of the, but also, it's one of the things that gives some liars the power to be so sincere. Mm -hmm. Because there are liars who believe their own lies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Because they're be being deceived. <laughs> because they're being deceived. Not only are they deceiving, speaking things that are falsehood, mm -hmm. they but they're believe believing it. these falsehoods. All right. Mm -hmm. how, how can that be? How can the heart be that way? Jeremiah, Jeremiah 17, verse 9 to 10 says this, The heart is deceitful, more deceitful than all else, and is desperately sick. The human heart, you need a heart transplant. If you've been saved, you had a heart transplant. Because yeah. that's what it says in Jeremiah. He took that heart of stone and gave you a heart of flesh. Yeah. Right? But that old nat natural heart of man. So all mankind needs heart transplants. Absolutely. Yes. And, well, those who haven't been saved. Right. That's what, yeah. yeah. Well, once you've been saved, you've had that heart transplant. Right. Yes. yes. So you've had, that, you've had that sick heart, that heart of stone taken from you, mm -hmm. and you've been given a new heart. Created me a, 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 clean heart. a clean heart. God gives you a new heart. That's yeah. right. All right. 
All right, let me bounce back to Isaiah. Okay. And, and please, you'll see, just, just take this word in, God's word, and, and you'll see the connections. Mm. Isaiah 64, 6. For all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like filthy rags. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Our filthy, our, our good deeds that we generate, are like filthy garments, it says in the Word of God. And you'll see why here in a minute, right? Because Jesus said, but everyone, okay, let me go, let me go back here. He, he who does the will of my Father, mm -hmm. we, have, we have a TV, right? Yeah, just carry on. Okay. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Yeah. Okay. What is the will of God's Father? Now, 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 I'm going to tell you, that's, that's really a tough question to ask because it's so, it's so broad the way I just asked it. Okay? Well, let, instead again, instead of me leaning on my own understanding, let me go back into the word that Jesus had just spoken prior to this. Mm -hmm. And again, it's very, very important that you understand we often in our study, I said we've spent a half a year in this thing already, we often tend to separate as we're doing verses, or well, you'll go and you'll hear somebody preach from this verse or that verse, but you must remember that so this is one piece that Jesus has spoken in a relatively short period of time, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. just before he spoke this, he spoke this. Matthew 5.16 let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Mm -hmm. What is the will of God the Father? That He be glorified. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. His will is that He be glorified. Yes. If our works don't glorify God the Father, no yeah, matter how yes. no matter how good the good works are, mm -hmm. but filthy rags, right. because they have right. not yeah. accomplished His purpose yeah, nor done His, his will. Yeah. Yeah. It is so terribly important to get that fact in your heart and treasure that fact. So when you are leaning on your own understanding, you're producing filthy rags. You are, because you're, what happens is, even if you don't try, the credit, the glory, the yes. honor is going to go to you. you. Yeah. And if it goes to you, no matter it's how guaranteed. brilliant it seems to you, right. no matter how brilliant it may seem to others, it's nothing but filthy rags because it has God not has accomplished glorified. the will of God. Mm. Yes. Okay. Now, before we go on, let me just I'm gonna I'm gonna skip about here, but I believe that you'll see it's kinda of like a jigsaw puzzle. Right. Mm -hmm. I think you'll see the pieces coming together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not long ago or when we first came to England, as a matter of fact, when we first got here, within a matter of a couple of days, we went over to Penmanmar, North Wales, mm -hmm. from, from here in the uh, north of England. And we spent time at a conference with our dear brother, Arthur Bird. Mm -hmm. um, and during that time, there was a point when it was, it was good. It was a, it's always very good. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. But it was a lot, just a, a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. And then this lovely woman, Vivian, got up and began to, to sing a song, to play a song and sing it, that God had given her from the blessing of Aaron. And she, she sang it in Hebrew and then in English. Mm -hmm. And when she began to sing this, there just came this absolute peace and quietude yes. over the congregation. Mm -hmm. Just amazing. Yes. And as I was sitting there, I had a vision. That's that's mm -hmm. what happened. I have no other way to explain it. I have no other way. And the vision I had was this. I could see Jesus Christ standing on a hillside. Now, I couldn't see his face, but I knew that it was Jesus. Mm -hmm. And from all around, like a like 3D, 360 panel vision, mm -hmm. I could see people coming up this hill towards Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I was watching, and not a word. Jesus wasn't saying a word. Because everything that had to be said, had been said. And as people approached Jesus, at some point, they just fell flat on their faces on that hillside. Just fell flat on their faces before Him. And, and many were just like, I couldn't tell, it was like tears, tears of joy, tears, but tears. But 
all these people were falling at distant, at different distances right. from Jesus. Yeah. Places right. along the way. And I want I, this this vision was so clear and so powerful to me that I wanted to, as soon as the music stopped, I wanted to get up and, and share this vision with the mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. And God spoke to me quietly and said, "Do not share this because you don't understand it." Mm -hmm. So that evening I went back and I was praying. I was diligently seeking God about this. You know, I I don't understand what did I see. And He said, "This was the day." The great and terrible day of the Lord. This was the day that would come into the presence of God. And, and he said, this was people approaching Jesus Christ at the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they were falling because they were overwhelmed by the awe mm -hmm. of God. Yeah. Just as they approached him, they were just overwhelmed by his presence and fell on their faces, couldn't do anything. And the, and the tears were kind of tears of joy, but hard to explain, because they were seeing Almighty God who had made it possible for them to come into His presence. Mm. And then it was like the Lord said to me, who's more spiritual? The ones that get closest to me, or the ones farthest away? And I instantly knew it's the ones farthest away. Mm -hmm. Because they are most easily and most quickly overwhelmed by His, presence. By his awesome presence. Mm -hmm. Right. And you say, well, then who will reach me? Those who come to Him saying, Lord, Lord, look what I did. Mm -hmm. The people of whom He speaks in this verse. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because they have no humility. They have no awe of God. They come rushing into the presence of the King of Glory. They come into the presence of the King of Kings and they say, look what I did. Right. There's no humility. There's no, There's no awe. humility. There's no awe of God. What there is, is pride in what they have done. Right. Not good. Okay? Yeah, yeah, okay, it's important that you get that, all right? Yes. Only the proud would reach him. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. The humble would fall before, before him. Yeah. More humble, farther away. Mm. Yes. Okay? Calling him Lord means listening to his commands mm -hmm. and then carrying him out. Yeah. That's what it means to have a Lord in your life. Right. Is somebody that has the authority over you tells you what to do, and then you, you respond. Yes. Okay? James says, James 1, 22 and 23 says, But prove yourself doers of the word, and not merely hearers who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he's like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. Paul said in Romans 2, 13, For it's not the hearers of the law who are just before God, but the doers of the law will be just. Mm -hmm. way back in Deuteronomy 28 mm -hmm. God spoke through Moses to Moses okay. and said now it shall be if you diligently obey the Lord your God being careful to do all his commandments which I command you today the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth Deuteronomy 28 1 mm -hmm. so what I'm talking about here the Lordship of Jesus Christ is a recognition of his total total, complete authority over your life. Mm -hmm. And the only way that, that is proven is not that you hear Him, but you do what you have heard. Right. Yeah. Okay? Otherwise, you can say all day long, you can sit in a church and hear mm -hmm. God, but if you don't respond and do, you may call Him Lord with your lips, yeah. but your heart declares you a liar. And yeah. what you're also doing is sinning. Of course it's sin. Because yeah. you're not obeying him. Absol absolutely. All right? All right, so these people come yeah. before him, and they say, and he, Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Yeah. And in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles. People will come into the physical presence of the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the King of Glory, and they will say to him, who stands there with nail-scarred hands, 
and they'll say to him, look what I did. You know what that just struck me is, as, as excuses. They're coming before him with excuses as to why they're not, I mean, without even realizing why they're not in awe of him. And if they, because well, of, and I'm thinking of the fact that though that would kill repentance. Well, yeah, but at this point, and remember what I said, they at this point, no, no, at this point, yes, there's nothing, Jesus is not saying anything. No, he's not. Right? Because it's all been said. said. At this point, there's no opportunity for repentance. I was going to say, just, yeah, that just struck me. You know, it says today is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, because your fathers did it in There is an appointed That's time. So cool you know, there's still a time. If you, if you don't know the Lord God Almighty as your Lord and your Savior, don't put it off. You have no guarantee yeah. that there's a tomorrow in your life. None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. All right? So now I want you to remember this. Remember, talking back, just just moments before this, in real time, mm -hmm. Jesus had said to these people that the eyes are the lamp of the body. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Got that? Yes. Listen to this now. This is Proverbs chapter 6. I'm going to read verse 16 and 17. Now, you, you probably have all heard this. There are six things which the Lord hates. Yea, even seven, which are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Now there's more, but I just want to start that list because I want you to see what starts the list. Haughty eyes. Haughty eyes is pride. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, okay? David prayed, O Lord, my heart is not proud, nor my eyes haughty. Psalm 131.1. Haughty eyes is pride. Because that pride is the gateway that allows all that other sin to come into your life. Yes. Without that pride, that's humility is a block to sin. Mm. It's a barrier to sin. Pride is an open gate to sin. Mm. Yes. Okay. Listen to this verse. If it's not highlighted in your Bible, maybe you want to highlight it. Because it's Psalm 115.1. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory, because of your loving kindness, because of your truth. The cry of our heart has to be, not to us, O Lord, not to us, mm -hmm. to you be the glory. Now, people get proud because God uses them. That's a danger. God used the Pharaoh. Yes, he did. God used the donkey. Mm -hmm. God used Satan in Job's life. Mm -hmm. God used Nebuchadnezzar to correct his own people. God gave authority to and used Pontius Pilate mm -hmm. to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah 53, 5. But he, speaking of Jesus, but he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging, we are healed. That's what Pilate accomplished. He was used by God the Father. Yes. So, if God can use a Pharaoh, Nebuchadnezzar, Pontius Pilate, use a donkey, use the devil himself, mm -hmm. don't get proud because he uses you. That's mm -hmm. the point. Yeah. Yeah. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to yeah. thee, to thy name be the glory. The danger today in, an, in a world where we live, where, and it's always been this way, but not to the degree that it exists today, yeah. where we just deify entertainers, sports figures, yes. Yes. Yeah. and lift them up. Yeah. There is such a danger because human beings are being conditioned and trained to worship men. Yeah. Yes, true. And what does that lead to? At, what we, well, I, I know it leads to. But you know what? This is happening inside the churches, where most churches are a one-man show. Yeah. Mm. Where from any number of people walk into pastors a church building on a Sunday and there's a pastor up there, and he is the focus of all attention. That's right. You hear what I say? Mm -hmm. He's yeah, the focus of all attention. Mm -hmm. And after the sermon, everybody walks up and pats him on the head and says, Oh, what a wonderful job you did. There's great and grave danger. If he's done a wonderful job, don't worry. He'll hear these words from the right person. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. He doesn't need your accolades. 
Elihu and Job said, I will flatter no man. Paul said that he wouldn't flatter any man. You know, we've got to get to the place where not to us, but to God goes all the glory. Yes. Right? Yeah. It says that God has made everything and everybody for his purpose. Mm -hmm. The Pharaoh, right? Yes. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. even Satan, made for his purpose. Right. When people believe that the Lord is using them, that, that that the Lord is using them, is a sign that they are special, and they somehow deserve the favor of God, it somehow escapes their notice that it has been His habit throughout the ages to choose the least. Like Israel, Israel itself, and David, who was anointed to be king over. He was the least of his seven brothers. It escapes their notice and they forget that God still chooses the foolish in order to shame the wisdom of the wise. They forget and it escapes their notice that God uses the weak to shame the strong. When they believe that he who went to the cross should be impressed with what they did, the floodgates burst and pride floods their lives. Yeah. Right. They're just overtaken with it. And that's the only way anybody can come into the presence of Jesus Christ on that day and say, so Look what I did. Right. Yeah. They're consumed with pride. Yes. One of the reasons that people get to believe that they're special is because everybody around them tells them they're special. Because we are a celebrity oriented culture and society. Yeah. Yeah. When we are called by the Word of God to fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, we need to be careful of this in the body of Christ today mm -hmm. because we are creating superstars. Yes, that's so Maybe we are condemning yeah. people by creating superstars mm -hmm. because if they get their reward here on earth, they've gotten their reward in full. That's, that's what, that's what the Lord said. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? What everybody who is used by God should remember what, and by the way, remember, I, I said this many times during the study. Every Christian has a ministry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every Christian has a ministry. Mm -hmm. Not every Christian is called to stand behind the pulpit or mm -hmm. you know do this or do that or stand up with a guitar and sing before lots of people. But every Christian, because the Word of God said, Paul wrote it to the Corinthians, the Spirit of God works through each mm -hmm. individual as He wills. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God works through everybody. All right? Think about this. What we should remember is the attitude of who I believe is the first minister in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Of whom Jesus proclaimed in Matthew 11, mm -hmm. among those born of women there has not been arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Camel hair and wild honey Locusts, wild locusts, out in the wilderness. Here's a man that came from a priestly family. Yeah. Now, priestly family, they had the great best garments, mm -hmm. the fanciest garments, yeah. the most special place in all of Israel. Yes. He's out in the wilderness. And what he mm -hmm. said was, yeah. I must decrease that he, Jesus, might increase. Mm -hmm. The attitude of anybody and everybody who is used of God must be that we decrease that he might increase yeah. that we not be seen so that he might be seen yeah. we get no glory so that he gets all the glory yeah. because if you get a little this is a zero sum game yeah. you get a little glory guess where it came from you robbed it from Jesus Christ mm. yes. it's the truth yeah, it's true. to whatever degree you are elevated by men Christ is brought down yeah. to whatever degree a minister of God Quote, put quotes around it, is elevated and honored and given glory, that glory is robbed from Jesus Christ. Listen, if you don't like that, I was going to say write to me, but I didn't say this. The Word of God says this. So if you don't like this, write to Jesus Christ at heaven.org. Bring all of your complaints to Him. And the best to you, brother. Okay. The work that we are called to do is simple. Therefore, 
talking of his disciples, they said to him, What shall we do so that we may work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. John 6, 28 and 29. The work that God is calling us to do to is to believe in Jesus Christ. Yeah, right. Our work is to believe in Jesus, the Lord Jesus, Jesus the Christ, the anointed. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's when you believe with your heart, then you, you will speak. Yes. In the, what's the abundance of the your heart. heart. But yeah. listen, because here's the work that we're supposed to do, is to believe in Jesus. When we believe in Jesus as the Lord of Lords, as the King of Kings, mm -hmm. as the Christ, as the which by the way is Greek for anointed, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we believe in Him as anointed, yeah. then He works His works through us yeah. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't do the work. When we do the work that we're supposed to do, it's which is believing in Him, yeah. then He works through us. So we can yeah, boast in the yeah. Lord. So we can, if any man boasts, let him boast in the Lord. Right. Because then That's you have to realize, and these people who came to him mm -hmm. saying, Lord, Lord, look what I did. They did not realize that what they did, it's either, you know, it's not them. If it's, if it's blessing people, it is God at work through them. And they get none. Of the yeah. Write that down. None. Zero of the glory and mm -hmm. honor. And woe be to the pastor or minister or evangelist who is willing to accept any of the honor and glory for the work that God does in your life and through your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For Listen to this. If you don't believe, don't, I'm telling you, don't take my word for any of this. Paul wrote to the Philippians. This is the word of God, the eternal word of God. The words of eternal life. Philippians 2.13 For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for His good pleasure. You cannot take credit for any of these good things that God chooses to do through you because it's not you. You're just, you're just the earthen vessel filled with the treasure. You're mm. just the pot, brother. Mm. Yeah. He's, your work is to believe in Him. His work is to do all the works through you. Could you tell me where that was in Philippians? Philippians 2.13 All the glory, all the credit, all the honor belong to him. Or do you not remember what he had just said mm. before? Hallowed be his name. Mm. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory. Don't separate the Sermon on the Mount. Understand that it all fits. It mm. all interprets itself. It's yes. all commentary on itself. Yes, yes, yes. And these people come to Jesus on this day and they say, Look what we're doing. In your name, perform, to perform miracles. Many miracles is what it says, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Jesus doesn't contradict them. That's no, not the he point. Doesn't. No. He doesn't contradict the fact that these people may have actually done these things, these miracles. Mm -hmm. So these people, and they, remember when we started with the tares? The tares yes. are lawless and headed for mm -hmm. the pit. Yeah. So how can God work through them? I say He could work through the Pharaoh, He could work through Nebuchadnezzar, right, He could exactly. work through the donkey, He can work through God anybody He wants. He can use and will use anyone or anything. But there are two possibilities here. Consider this. God is using them in spite of their lawless practice. Right. Right. God is using them. Mm -hmm. He's accomplishing okay. what He wants. So here's what to learn. And I'm going to show you the relevance for this in our day. Mm -hmm. But understand, the fact that God is using somebody is not a fact or a statement, a or a stamp of, of God's approval on the person. Right, right. it's just a tool that he's using. It's incredibly okay. important for you to understand that. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you believe, as I do, that Jesus was the son of a carpenter, as the scripture says, yes. mm -hmm. and he was raised in the family, as was the tradition of all the Jews, he would have been trained as a carpenter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. He built stuff. Yes, he yes. did. Well now, uh, I almost said something I shouldn't. Yeah. I'm not going to talk about the Catholics. Yeah. I mean, they'd be out looking for a crew cross. I I'm just surprised I haven't found the true hammer <laughs> and have it as a relic someplace. Because oh, yeah. so, the hammer should get all the credit for whatever Jesus did, or the saw. The, I the tools, yeah. yeah. The tools, where are the tools? They don't matter. No, they don't. 
That's right. What matters is what is accomplished artist. and who the artisan is that accomplished it. The fruit yes. of the it's not about the tools. It's the and that's fruit. all we are, right. is the tools. Now, you know what? You're going to get the glory that you deserve, the honor you deserve. You're going to have the success that God desires for you. Mm -hmm. You know when? When you hear Him, nobody else. When you yeah. hear Him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. All right? But remember, He said, how will be, talking to the Father, how will be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Th thine is the power, thine is the glory. God's not sharing His glory with you. I'm sorry, that's mm -hmm. the way it is. So anyhow, God can use these people in spite of the fact that they're evil. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 okay. So th th the test of a person is not all oh, the works they're doing, because that doesn't indicate God's stamp of approval on them. Because oftentimes God will use an ungodly person to touch the life of a person sitting there, out there, in a chair in the front, mm -hmm. because God loves that person sitting in a chair. It has nothing to do with the, the person. Right. Yeah. Tool. Okay. right. God is desiring to bless those people, and He will do it. He was desiring to re reach somebody when He spoke to the donkey, Blom's donkey. Yes. Right? It's, it, it's not about the tool, it's about... So we, I'll be very, very prayerful. We'll get more of this. There's a second possibility. The first possibility is that God is actually using them. Yes. The second possibility, which is very, very strong, is God is not using them. It's the devil is using it's them. Imitating. Mm. Yeah. Oh, imitating. What is the imitation of power? Everybody said magic. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Magic is the imitation of power. Yeah. Okay. It is the art of deception. It's smoke and mirrors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? But it looks like... What does it look like? Well, I'll tell you in a minute. Number one. Like I said, God can and will touch the lives of people through the works of evil workers because of His love for those people. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the workers, all to do with the Lord's amazing grace. Right. Mm -hmm. The second one, magicians. As far back as the time of Moses... Imagine. No, going back to Moses in oh, Egypt, Moses. right? Okay. When God used Moses and Aaron to do these mighty miracles during plagues, mm -hmm. you know, right? Oh, yes, yes. Pharaoh called his magicians and yeah. oftentimes they did the same thing. That's right. mm -hmm. Their purpose was different. Their heart was different. Mm -hmm. And their brains were different because they were stupid. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, one of my favorite accounts yes. in Scripture. Frogs. Yes. I mean, talk about stupid. And God calls them stupid, by the way. Yes, mm -hmm. He does. All right? So don't you get offended because I call them stupid. God called them stupid. One of the plagues that God brought on the land in Egypt when Pharaoh refused to let the people go was he brought a plague of frogs by the hand of Aaron, uh, Aaron and Moses. Right? Mm -hmm. So there, there are frogs covering the land, literally covering the land. So mm -hmm. this is a plague. It's not just a couple of frogs out making nice chirps in the night. Yeah. The land is covered with frogs. Not only the land, but inside the houses. Oh, it says there were frogs in the mm -hmm. ovens. There were frogs in the bed. You've got to get the frogs picture. The there were frogs everywhere. It's like, and they wore sandals back in those days. Yeah. So every time you took a step, it was squish, squish, frog juice between mm -hmm. the toes. I mean, this is bad. <laughs> so, you know, Pharaoh doesn't repent. What does he do? He calls his magicians. magicians. And he says to his magicians, take care of this problem. So you know what they do? <laughs> they make more frogs. <laughs> mm -hmm. And God calls that stupid. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> The point is, if the problem is frogs, you don't make it better by making more frogs. Mm -hmm. However, what they were more concerned with was not the result. What they were concerned with was their own pride. To show that they had the power to do exactly. the kind of thing that yeah. Moses did. Right. right. Okay. So pride is at work. But they were able to do it. Yeah, they mm -hmm. worked. Okay? So these, these Pharaoh's magicians did things. Doesn't mean that it, was God. it wasn't God. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Or maybe it was God. Maybe he's just sitting on the throne having a laugh, which he does, by the way. Okay. But they never duplicated God's purpose. No. God's purpose was to set the pe his own people free. Their purpose was to exalt themselves and show their, their prideful activity, right? Acts chapter 8. Mm -hmm. You probably know this. Acts chapter 8, verse 9 and 11. Now there was a man named Simon who formerly was practicing magic in the city and astonishing the people of Samaria, claiming to be someone great. And listen to this now. And they all, from smallest to greatest, were giving attention to him, saying, 
This man is what is called the great power of God. And they were giving him attention because he had for a long time astonished them with his magic arts. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see magicians today, maybe you see them on the television or see them someplace, they do things and say, how do you do that? I don't know how they did that, but I will tell you this, they did it. Yes, they do. It wasn't a miracle of God. It didn't defy the laws of nature. It's smoke and mirrors. It's mm -hmm. deception. Yeah. It's sleight of hand. It is distraction. One of the schemes of the devil. Mm -hmm. They get you looking over here while they do something over here. And could it also be, I just demand. Demand. Can it be? I don't think there's any doubt. I think that, like with the pharaohs, magicians, I think that was demonic. Right. So it can be. But the point again is, do not be convinced that somebody is of God mm -hmm. just because it looks like they do something that has power behind it. Right. Okay. Pa that power can be imitated. Yes. And it's, it's, really, it's incredibly, incredibly important to do this. And that's why we need discernment. You absolutely need discernment, okay? Magic. I want to give you a dictionary. Now, many times here in our study of the Sermon on the Mount, I've gone back, I've used the dictionary, and it's yes. a good tool for you to have and use. Uh, magic, according to the dictionary, is the art that by use of spells supposedly invokes supernatural powers to influence events. Sorcery. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what magic is. Sorcery. Right? The practice of illusory tricks to entertain other people. Conjuring. So, <clears throat> it's either sorcery, as Alice said, or it's just smoke and mirrors, deception, yeah. sleight of hand, mm -hmm. right? But it is the imitation of God's power, what is called the great power of God, right? It comes from the Greek word for sorcery. That's where the word magic comes from. Yeah. However, it also comes from the priests of the Babylonians, the Persians, and the Medes, the Magi. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were the priests. They were considered to be the people with the power. power. Mm -hmm. right? That's where the word magic comes from. That's where the word magi comes from. It's from that same root yeah. for magic. Right? Now listen to this. Here's what makes this so incredibly important in our day and age. Okay. In Matthew 24, Jesus had come out of the temple with his disciples. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're talking to him about how beautiful the temple is. And he's yeah. you know, about a bing, bada, boom. That's a paraphrase, by the way. Mm -hmm. I got Worse it. than the message, by the <laughs> way. Okay. So anyhow, they say to him, what, what will be the sign of the end of the age and your coming? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen at the end? What are the signs? What are we going to look for? And one of the things that Jesus said was this. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders, so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So Jesus, as is Paul and John and others, foretelling particularly in the last days, mm -hmm. how these false prophets and, and false workers will arise. Numbers of them, right? For many of them, all, right? We're living in those last days. We're living in those perilous last days. Yes. You should understand from the Word of God that there are going to be many people who are proclaiming to be doing the works of God <coughs> mm -hmm. who are not doing the works of God. Yes. What's important here is that term, false Christs. Mm -hmm. yes. okay? Because I, m many people, if not most people that I talk to, when you talk about false Christs, you're saying that's the Antichrist. This is somebody proclaiming to be Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Yeah. Okay, that's the reason, if you think that, the reason you think that is because of a poor translation. Okay. And interestingly enough, the translation is just fine. The only problem with the translation is it shouldn't have a capital C. Uh -huh. Now, if you're using a Bible, and it says false Christ, and it has a capital C, yeah. they are implying something that is not there in the original. Okay. The word, Christ is not his name, by the way. His name is not Jesus Christ. That's not his last name. Or it's his not his last name. His surname. Christ is a title. It, it means anointed. It is the transliteration of the Hebrew word Messiah or Mashiach. Messiah. Mm -hmm. Which means anointed. Right, okay. Okay, his name is Yeshua ben Joseph. 
or Yeshua ben Yahweh. Da -da -da. He is the Son of God. That's it. Right? Okay. Yeah. My my um, Bible has Christ capitalized, but it also has a footnote saying Messiah. Well, that's because they're pointing to yes, a false Messiah. But the 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 assumption by most people is this is a person pretending to be Christ. Yes. To be yeah. pretending yes. to be Jesus. Well, I know that, that's what okay. I thought. But that's I. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The I'm Hebrew word used there is pseudo Christos, mm -hmm. false false Christ. But it's the Christos mm -hmm. means anointed. Right. But you know, they're not, okay, but they're not claiming to be Jesus, no. but they are claiming to be anointed. Right. Yeah. Know. But I, I always thought that you know how could. How could we not know that this isn't Jesus? I mean, we're, yeah. we would know that it isn't Jesus. So that well, always helps me. Yeah. yeah. That that uh, scripture that's all it had been. Explained. Well, that's that's why it's so important. Mm -hmm. Is because you hear so many people running around talking about their anointing, mm -hmm. or you know the anointing, and and or people saying that person is anointed. Yeah. Well, how do you know he's anointed? Because he did stuff. We just got through spending you know a good deal of time talking about the fact that. The fact that just because somebody did something does That's not mean that God has His anointing on him, or a stamp right? of approval, okay, or a stamp of approval on him, or that He is God sent, right? Right. And this is a great problem mm -hmm. because I see many Christians, and e the time is not cut short. Even the elect could be deceived. deceived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Many of the elect are being deceived because they believe that this person or that person has the anointing. Right. Yes. Well, really, they they're Jesus for said God. in the last yeah. days many would come saying that they have the anointing and it's a false anointing. And it's a f many false anointed. And one lives. of the things that said you should know them by their fruits. Well, and they and people are looking at the when we say magic, so to speak, mm -hmm. as a fruit of yeah. their anointing. Yeah, it is. Well, because it, that's what I talked about before. Their purpose is different. Right. All right? The purpose of God ministering is what? He, what he said when he came. Well, first of all and foremost, let's get priority right, is to bring salvation, the words yes. of eternal life to people. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in the eternal meantime, yeah. to set the, bro the, the captives yes. free, to heal the brokenhearted. Yeah. I mean, that's the purpose of God's ministry. Not to create a fame for some person who mm -hmm. claims to have God's anointing. And that will be increased in the last days. Mm -hmm. Jesus, listen, Jesus is not saying in response to his disciples asking about the, the end of the age, saying these people are claiming to be Jesus. He's saying these people are claiming to be anointed. Right. Right? Yes. right. That, this is so important because so many people are following people that they believe that have God's anointing. And they are not testing it. No. Jesus had just said, as Al said, you will know them by their fruit. So what's mm. the fruit? That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit working through you. Mm -hmm. What's God's fruit? fruit? Yeah. That's the fruit. I'm not making a distinction here. Yeah, I, I don't know. Please. Tell okay. Me. What Al said, and I don't, I don't disagree with. You know, if we're talking about people, we should see the fruit of the Holy Spirit in their life. Mm. But what's the fruit that God looks for? He is looking to bring people. Life. Jesus Christ came to this world for one purpose and one purpose only: to repair men. To repair reconcile them, to, to yeah. reconcile okay. them to God the Father. Paul, who did many miracles of God, who brought his teaching around the known world, the Roman world, said that we have a ministry of reconciliation. Yes. The fruit of all of this, of all of Christ's ministry, is the reconciliation of man to God the Father. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. Everything else is incidental to that. Okay. You know, I, I, I think I may have shared this here last week, I don't really recall. I go into churches all over the place, you know, as we travel around the world, and I say, and I've said over and over and over, how many of you here today believe that God wants to bless you as much as He absolutely, positively can? Without fail, every hand in the room shoots up. Yes. And I say to them, before I'm through, you're going to repent of that, mm -hmm. because it's simply not true. Mm -hmm. It's simply not true. If God wanted to bless the three of us here, as much as, as much as he possibly could, mm -hmm. right now, we would go. We, we would either a, a, a nuclear bomb would come through the roof and zap yeah, us. A comet right. would come through yeah. the roof. Right. 
or you know, an alien from over there would come out and eat us, something. Yeah. But we would die here in the natural. Yes. Yeah. Because as Paul said, the Word of God, he says, to live as Christ, to die as gain. We are in Saddleworth, England. It is not as good a place to be as the throne room of God. No, that's right. That's right. We are here to serve God. That's our purpose. And there is a cost to doing it. And people talk about the cost yeah, of following sure. Christ. I've, I've said, you know, I, dear brother Joe Levy, was just with Joe a little while ago. You know, a couple of years ago I was here and I was preaching and he had stood up uh, at a church and said, well, if you're going to follow Jesus, it's going to cost you something. Mm -hmm. And I got up following Joe. I said he was absolutely wrong. I said, if you're going to follow Jesus, it's going to cost you everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> but the yeah. fact of the matter is, what it is costing me to serve Jesus Christ right this moment is that I am not physically in his presence in the throne room in heaven. That's, that's what yes. it's costing me. Yes. Right, right. Yeah. Because when I am through fulfilling my purpose here, that's where I'll be. Amen. Right. Yeah. Okay? Hallelujah. So that is the cost because that is his purpose is because it is his desire, as Alice mentioned at the beginning of this study, that Peter wrote, it is God's desire that none should perish but all come to everlasting life. Mm -hmm. It was for this purpose that he sent Jesus into the world. Yeah. He, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him will have nice Cadillacs. Yeah. No. New homes. Mm -hmm. Better jobs. Yeah. So that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. That is the yeah. fruit of all ministry. Yeah. That is the fruit of... That is our of, goal. Yeah, that, it is. Well, the goal of our instruction is love. The ultimate goal of love is to restore us into that perfect relationship with God the Father and His Son Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It is... Everything else is... Listen, listen to me say one more time. Everything else is incidental to that. Yeah. All of the Great. healings, all of the miracles, all of the blessings... It is all incidental to God's ultimate purpose. Because as David said, this life here is but a breath. It's but a vapor. Mm. And you know, that's another thing that Satan is doing. And it's one of the three things that you said he does. Is One of them is distraction. Absolutely. So he has the people distracted by focusing on the healings and the miracles mm. and the, right. all that stuff. Right. When the purpose is... Is to focus on the God who did that work. Absolutely. And again, it was God that did the work regardless of whose hand he used to touch somebody. Our work is to believe in Jesus Christ. Once we've done that, then he can work the works of God through us. Amen. Amen. Beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. Amen. Beware of people who are, whoa, look anointed, and are out there getting the glory, Amen. getting the honor, getting the praise. Because I promise you, they are in grave danger. They are in desperately grave danger because what they may hear, they may hear accolades from men. They may, may hear praises from men. But they may also hear these words in the 23rd verse when Jesus says, And I will declare to them, I never, never knew you. Depart from me, yes. you who practice lawlessness. Remember who practice lawlessness? Those with haughty. Eyes. Eyes, yes. And he never knew them because they were of their father, the devil. Yes, he never knew them. So, we are in this age, and pride is the issue. I promise yes, you is. that pride yeah. is the issue. And pride is insidious. It, it will chip away, it will climb wear away. It's like a stream of little trickly water beating against a rock. Give it enough time, it's, it's like going to... Pac-Man. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it just, it's insidious, yes. right? Because that is the fruit of our fallen human nature. Paul said in the last days men will be lovers of self. That's the first one. Again, like the haughty eyes, the first one in Proverbs 6. It's mm -hmm. the gateway to all the rest. Right? Mm -hmm. Our instruction is humble yourself and He will exalt you. Yes. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and He will exalt you. Our, our way of living victoriously in, victoriously in this world is to humble yourself before the Lord. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. It all goes to the issue of humility. Humility is not about you trying to beat yourself down. Humility is about you trying to exalt Jesus Christ. Yes. Don't get deceived about that. It's not a matter of feeling bad about yourself. It is a matter about feeling good about your God. Yes. Don't get those backwards. Mm. Satan will try and do that. Yeah, yeah, and then what will happen is you'll find a false humility and you will become proud of your humility. Mm. And there the pride will be again. Yep. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's a strange time and a strange place. I keep saying to Tim, we are blessed to live in exciting times. Yes, we, are. Mm. we are. But I'm telling you that God desires for us to be blessed by allowing Him to be glorified in our lives. Yes. That He would receive all the honor and the glory. And I'm telling you this, if you do the work that He's calling you to do, I'm not talking about being a carpenter or a baker. Or, I'm talking about believe on the Lord Jesus Christ whom you sent. Mm -hmm. If you believe in Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, that means He says do something, you do it. Mm. You will see God glorified through your life. Yes. And you will be blessed to the maximum that you can be blessed while you are yet here on this planet. Because there is no greater joy than to be used for God to be glorified. So we're gonna we're gonna just end that. that I, I, I want to talk a little bit about this verse twenty three when we come back next week. Okay. All right. Let me just read this whole twenty two and twenty three one more time before right. we go. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare them. Jesus says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. I want to talk about that a little bit like next week. Is prophecy, casting out demons, mm. and performing miracles lawlessness? Mm. No. Mm. No. So we're going to determine next week as we start What's up in the the next, where the lawlessness comes into play mm. here. Good. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, until that time, my, my prayer for all of us yes. is that by fixing our eyes on Jesus Christ, the author, the finisher, the perfecter mm -hmm. of our faith, by seeing His glory more clearly every day, by being overwhelmed by the awesomeness of our God, we would be humbled. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And we would be excited about mm. Him being exalted. Mm. And that our goal going out this week would be that we grow closer to Him because if we draw near to Him, He'll draw near to us. And that He be glorified through our lives. Amen. Please be on guard. Be on the alert. There are many people out there doing great signs and wonders, yes. casting out demons, doing miracles, doing all these things, and people are saying they're anointed. They're, they might just as well say they're the Christ. They're a Christ, because that's what it means. That's not the test. The test is the fruit. Are they being used to reconcile people? But above all, the first fruit is love. And the first command is love. Mm -hmm. You shall love the Lord your God mm -hmm. with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, your brain, your everything. 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 That's the love that God is looking for. A love of Him that is complete. Because that is only a reflection of His love for you. His love for you is complete and entire, holding nothing back. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we do thank You for that. Mm -hmm. We thank You that You poured out Your love we thank you that you gave your son to go in our place. We thank you that you loved us while we were so unlovable. Mm -hmm. That you loved us while we were yet sinners. Yes, and I pray that we would learn from that, Father. Mm -hmm. And that we would go forth in your name and do the work that we're supposed to do. Just believing in your son and that we would be available that you might work your work through us for your glory. In the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Christ. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Um. Well, till next time, God bless you. Don't forget to write to us at office at BibleTalk.com. And remember, Jesus loves you. A lot. Hallelujah. Bye. Hallelujah.